All right, so we've got our guitar in tune now. The next thing we're probably going to be doing is hitting up a song tutorial and the instructor is going to guide you through the chords that you need to learn to be able to play the song. Often, you might get an instructor guiding you finger by finger and string by string where you should um, place your fingers to play the chords. But something that's a lot easier uh, if you don't have the benefit of some diagrams on screen would be a sheet of chord boxes of your open chords. And it just so happens that I have one that you can download for free down in the description box. So if you open this up, you'll see this is called open chords. And open chords are those that we find in what is termed the open position. Fret one, two, three, and four is what we term the open position. And these chord shapes use a combination of both open strings, so those that have no fingers on them, and fretted notes. So how do we read these chord boxes? Well, first thing is to get your guitar orientated this way around, and you'll see on the diagram that you have um, a thick black line. That is referring to this piece, which you will remember is called the nut. Think squirrels. So the nut is there. And the strings are arranged from low to high, so 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, or E, A, D, G, B, E. Above the nut, you will see either crosses or circles. A cross above a string is a string which is not played, it doesn't form part of that chord shape. But a circle above the string is a chord that is played, and it's a chord, sorry, a string that is played, and it is one of those open strings. So you play it, but there are no fingers on that string. If you don't see a symbol above a string, that's because there will be some fingers on the board. If you look, there are black dots, and each of those black dots is one of your fingers that you need to press into the board to play that chord. Now, sometimes, in the case of my diagrams, you find numbers inside of those circles. Sometimes the numbers will be written below the box, and they refer to the fretting hand finger numbers, okay? So we have, what do we have? Well, in piano, we say that this is one, two, three, four, and five. But in guitar, the thumb is, for the most part at least, gonna be pressing into the back of the neck, so we don't count that. We start with the index, this is finger one, middle is two, ring is three, and pinky is number four. So technique for playing chords. Our thumb, we want to have firmly pressing into the back of the neck. Thumbs up, okay? Try not to have it over the top or to the side. Definitely thumbs up, pressing into the back, okay? Because we're gonna bring the fingers around so the thumb will be squeezing into the neck and so will the fingers. The hand is doing this sort of a motion. Imagine you're squeezing a lemon or something like that, okay? So the thumb is in the back and that we want then the hand to be down underneath the neck. We don't want the hand to be touching this neck, okay? There's a risk that we're gonna to touch strings that we want to ring out. So the hand sits low under the neck and that then encourages the fingers or it helps them to get a nice rounding as we come into the strings. If you can see this, that's the sort of shape we want in the fingers. Try and avoid any straightness. Be using all of your knuckle joints there. Get all those articulations going and round those fingers. In terms of the fingers themselves, when they come on to the front of the board, you want to be using the very tips of your fingers, okay, as much as possible. And those finger tips, you are gonna place in the frets. But taking, for example, uh, go back to that C chord, as I, if I, position for my C chord, I have all the fingers very close to the fret wires of the fret they are in. So if you look down, say I'm taking this third fret here, this third finger, I don't have the finger back here to the kind of the left of the fret. My finger is right up as far as it can go close to the fret wire there. That's the optimum kind of position for your fingers where you have to give the least amount of effort to get the note to ring out. All right, um, but you don't want to go too far. If you come onto the wire, 
you get a kind of muffling of the sound. So keep that finger behind the wire. Okay, so you have your diagram of open chords and you're gonna be learning these with each song that you do, but you can go ahead and learn them just one by one. A special mention on the E minor chords, all right, because often you will see it taught with fingers two and three, because if you put all three fingers on the board, we have an E major, taking finger one off, we have E minor. That's fine and good, that works, but I have found with the keys that you normally find this chord, a better fingering will be to use fingers one and two, okay? Another mention would be the F chord. Dun, 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 the dreaded F. Often um, you might see an F chord in a chord progression in a song, um, but because of the key, again, the group of chords that we expect to find an F chord, if you're an absolute beginner, you will probably be able to get away with what's called an F major seven. That's with an open string number one, and that avoids any need for a barring of the finger, i.e. using a finger as, kind of, as a bar over multiple strings, which is this one. So the F F chord has a big old, a big old bar finger there. Now, if you're far from that, which you, you may well be as a beginner, or you, you will be as a beginner, then you see an F chord in a progression, then you can go ahead and use F major seven, and it should work, but just be using your ears and making sure that's the case. All right, so now we've got some chords, let's think about putting them to a beat 